today, like talk about how we use blockchain in Polygon ID. So every decentralized identity system requires some kind of global accessible repository. And blockchain is always a good alternative because of its decentralized properties and other factors like censorship resistance, etc. The first use case for the blockchain, and one of the most obvious ones, is revocation. Right? The self-sovereign identity systems work with three parties. They issue the verifier and the identity holder, where the issuer basically sends credentials to the identity holder that the identity holder can then share with third parties. But there is uh, no dependencies between these three actors. And also, we prevent the issuer from knowing too much about how the identity holder is using these credentials. We would also like to have a system where the verifier doesn't depend on the issuer being online and available all the time to check if these credentials are still valid or not. And for that reason, we have a central repository with this, the, the, the blockchain. How this works is uh, when the issuer wants to revoke a credential that has been already sent to the identity holder, right? They cannot contact the verifiers. They cannot warn the verifiers about, hey, this credential is no longer valid because the issuer shouldn't know where and how these credentials are being used. So what the issuer does is they publish a new update on their own state. The identity state of the issuer contains three of revocations, a Merkle tree of revocations. So they update that identity state on the blockchain, right? So the next time an identity holder presents these credentials to the verifier, can check on the blockchain if they are still valid or not, if they have been revoked or not. In Polygon ID, what we do is that the identity holder, the wallet, creates a zero knowledge proof of non-revocation and the verifier can check this proof against the blockchain. That way, there is no direct communication between the issuer and the verifier, but credentials can be proved to be valid. That is the most obvious and the most frequent use case of the blockchain, but there are others. The other use case is around key management. Private keys are complex things to manage, and one of, one of the aspects is they need to be kept private, but sometimes they get exposed, they get stolen, they get lost. And in these cases, and also because of good best practices and operational security, we want to be able to rotate the keys, either because they have been compromised or just to any security threats. When we rotate these keys, we need to tell the world that our identity, that can be the identity holder or the issuer, we need to tell everybody that now the identity that is behind this DID identifier is no longer in control or is no longer singing with that private key. And now we have this new set of keys. There's another case where we can have multiple keys. And we also want to tell the world that, hey, now this identity is in control of another set of keys. All these announcements need to be public and widely available. And that's why they also produce updates into the identity state either the identity holder or the issuer. There is a last case, something that we call the Merkle tree issuance method. It's a particular feature for issuers that can update their state every time they claim something, deliver a credential to an identity holder. And the reason why they do that is only if they need a trustless timestamp. So the identity holder can prove that the credential was delivered at a certain point in time. But that's a minor case. What we need to remember, just to wrap it up, the two main cases for the blockchain in Polygon ID are revocations and key rotation or multiple keys.